I'm the pastor of recovery here at Community of Hope Church, and I'm just so grateful to be able to be here with you tonight. And I'm really grateful for you guys showing up because it's given me a place to be so I can go and get some recovery tonight. So thank you. And, um, you know, it's, it's crazy how God works because I didn't play any part in choosing those songs. <laughs> but that's just the way God works um, because they tie really great into the message that God gave me tonight. We're going to be talking um, a little bit later about darkness. We're going to be talking about how we can get rid of that. And we're definitely going to be talking about prayer. And for that, I'm excited to get into this message with you guys. So we're going to be speaking about step 11. Step 11 tonight, it says, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And we're going to take a look at some scripture here tonight. It's in the, uh, the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 103, and it's verses 1 through 5. And it says, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? And crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I'm gonna pray. Lord, thank you so much for tonight. God, thank you for the opportunity for me to be here, because it's only made possible because of you and because of the sobriety that I have, because of the way you've worked in my life. Thank you for my recovery. And God, I pray that every single person in here tonight goes home feeling refreshed, goes home feeling more confident because they recognize that they have hope because they can see how, they, uh, how you are working in and through their lives. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so I decided to call this, um, this share with you the attitude of gratitude. The attitude of gratitude, and you're going to see why. <laughs> so let's take a look at step 11 again. Here I want to highlight where it says pray. There's two spots here where it says prayer. And I want to highlight where it says meditation as well. It says we sought through prayer and meditation to do what? To improve our conscious contact with God, okay, praying only for knowledge of his will for us, and the power to carry that out. Now, when we look at the word pray, we recognize, I recognize that it's repeated. That word pray is repeated twice inside of this step. And I've learned that when things are repeated in recovery, especially when I'm reading scripture, I have to pay attention. Why is it there? Why is pray, pray or the form of pray in this step twice? To me, it's probably because it's important. So I really want to start paying attention to, to why prayer is there. And so I can ask, what is prayer? You know, a lot of people have a take on prayer. Some of it's probably right and some of it's probably wrong. And I know that my understanding of prayer has evolved. Um, not that prayer has evolved, but my understanding of it has. Prayer I'm going to tell you what prayer, um, what prayer means to me in a little bit. First, I'm going to take a look at what um, uh, an author named Eugene Peterson says in, in a book called Working the Angles. He says, this is what prayer is not. Most of the people we meet inside and outside of the church think prayers are harmless but necessary starting pistols that shoot blanks and just get things going. <laughs> Please laugh at that. <laughs> that is not true. And I really hope that that is not what I just did when I offered a prayer for myself and for all of you guys. I didn't just pray something because it's part of the culture at a church. I didn't just say some stuff just because that's what people are doing. I pray because I believe that it's real and that prayer is powerful. So 
what Eugene Peterson is saying here. He's like, it's as if prayer is something that we can do just to get it out of the way so that we may go on with the discussion or activity without regard for God. For me, it's actually the exact opposite. I want to make sure that I am acknowledging God's presence and that I am actively searching to do what his will is throughout the rest of the discussion and throughout the rest of the activity. And so prayers I have, um, instead I want to commend to you that prayer is very powerful, right? And so prayer, what I recognize through my personal experience and through the studies that I have done, Prayer is the means for which we are able to consciously enter into the activity and will of God. Prayer is the means for which we are able to consciously enter into the activity and the will of God. To me, it's a big deal that we highlight that word consciously because that's really the deal. The idea that we get to choose to enter into the activity and will of God is a really big deal. Because I believe that the activity and the will of God is happening in and through us and around us all the time. But a lot of times we have a blind eye to it. And so we don't engage with it because we don't know it's happening. As it is, the concerns of God are ever present in everyone's life. The matter of becoming open to experiencing them is on us. Therefore, all prayer is a response. All prayer is a response to what God has already spoken and created for us to experience. You know, we can see that all throughout Scripture, especially in Genesis. God spoke, and then it was. So, therefore, we really don't have an option to speak first. (laughs) It is always going to be in response to what God has already done. And God loves you, so he's speaking good into your life. And so I want to tell you a little story about how I actually started to understand this. A few, a few years ago, let's say about four years ago, um, I had been released from prison, and I started to go to something called Celebrate Recovery. And when I went, people talked a lot about prayer, people talked about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and I didn't really know what they were talking about. And so... Um, Uh, a person who was leading a group gave me a challenge one night and he said, go home and pray for God to reveal himself through the Holy Spirit and just see what happens. And so, because I didn't really know what prayer was, I mean, like I knew of it, but it was more of like that blank pistol shooting off. I didn't think it was really anything to it. But I went home and I trusted what the guy said and I actually tried it. And I got on my knees before I went to sleep and I prayed for God to reveal who he was through the Holy Spirit. And it was in that moment I had a spiritual awakening. It was like that. All of a sudden I felt this overwhelming sense of peace, of compassion, of love, of grace, a sense of belonging just rushing up and through my body. It was something that I could have never experienced before that I can't just create by myself but it was something that actually took me a couple days to realize because I tried to shake it off. I'm like crying in my room. Like, oh, what was that? I'm just gonna go to sleep. And so, (laughs) that's a true story. And so, it actually took me a couple days to realize what happened. I asked for God to show up and then that happened. I felt good. I felt peace. I felt unity. I felt compassion. I felt love. And it was a result of me praying. Go figure. Prayer is powerful. So if we recognize prayer is powerful, prayer is always a response to what God has done. And we can look to the book of Psalms as the book of prayer in Scripture to learn how to respond to God. So I want to look at how these verses reflect on um, step 11 how they reflect on each other as they develop, and what it is that we can do with them. So I want to read verse 1 again. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my innermost being, praise his holy name. 
Verse one, the psalmist begins by praising God. For us, it could sound like, I am so grateful, because if you don't know what praise is, I'm gonna try to explain a little bit to you right now. I didn't when I first came in. I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was talking about. For us, it could sound like, I am so grateful for you, God. To my soul, I am grateful for you. I can't keep inside my gratefulness to you. You are so far above me and above everything. You are holy. Verse two, praise the Lord, my soul. And I like what he does here, the psalmist. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now the psalmist begins to describe why he is so grateful. Although he is still using general terms, and this is something that I want to point out to you. When you start to see, when you're reading scripture, I commend to you, please read. Please read the word of God. And you start to see something that is general, the idea of praise, and then you start to see lists of things that are specific. Pay attention to why the author did that. Because he did it for a reason. And we're going to see the reason. Verse 3 says, Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Verse 3, the psalmist here is starting with what is so vitally important to him. It's that he was forgiven. Then he makes the connection that healing follows as if it is something that he has personally experienced. What's more is that he says diseases. Now for me, I get excited about that because addiction and alcoholism is recognized as a disease. This isn't something that we just have, something that we chose. It's a complicated disease. It's a disease. And right here in the word of God, it's saying, hey, I'm gonna forgive you. And after that follows your, your forgiveness. Now, to me, this is really important because before I had recovery in my life, I didn't have Christ in my life. Before I had Christ in my life, I was void of forgiveness. And so I felt like it was impossible for me to move on. I felt like it was impossible for me to overcome anything. I felt like it was impossible for me to accept love because I couldn't be forgiven for the actions that I had taken. Just a moment ago, I said I had been released from prison. I used to rob banks to get heroin and get coke. That wasn't the worst thing I did. The worst thing I did was probably against my family, against my friends, against the people who trusted me the most. I felt like I couldn't move on. I felt like there was literally no hope for me. Now, is anyone in here grateful that you have been forgiven by Christ? That's right. Did anyone come in here because they recognize they need healing from something? Whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual? I know I first came into the rooms exactly for that reason. I was physically addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I was mentally addicted to the turmoil that it created. And I spiritually had a malady that was so bad that I couldn't receive love. Verse four, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Here the psalmist continues to be specific. This time he uses a contrast though. It's another thing to pay attention to when you're reading scripture he really starts to highlight the reasons why he is so excited. I felt like before I was in the pit of hell. But I received the forgiveness. I received healing from my sickness and my suffering. And I began to move forward in life. I believed I was helpless for myself, who happened to be the only one that I was around because I literally sheltered everybody else from me. I siloed myself. 
all the time. In fact, that is the only way I was able to receive love was because I looked to the compassion displayed through the cross that was motivated by love. I needed to follow the example and have compassion on myself so that I could receive and therefore show love. Because if I didn't allow myself to receive, I could never truly give. As it's said in the rooms here, we can't, we can't give away what we do not have. And we can't keep what we don't give away. It's one of those paradoxes that only makes sense when you experience it. That's what I'm calling you here tonight to do, is experience this. Verse five, how strong is this verse? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? God satisfies our desires to get well, to have our lives restored, and our relationships restored. But that is not where he stops. No, God is good. In fact, ask me how good is God? How good is God? Yes, good job, guys. Well, but just because you asked, I'm going to tell you. God is so good that he more than restores our lives and our relationship. Just like when a kid breaks a bone, it's placed in a cast, and the body goes to work. All of a sudden, that bone is healed and mended, and that bone is stronger than what it initially started out as. That's what he does with us. That's what he does. We, I came in here broken. I came in here where my relationships were trash, and God has completely repaired and restored them now to where they are stronger. When you look at best friends from high school, they treat each other like brothers. It's for a reason. It's not because everything was good always. It's because they decided to go through life together to tough it out through the good and through the bad. When you see a couple who's been married for 50 years, they know that their spouse isn't going anywhere and isn't doing anything. And it's beautiful. It's not because those 50 years were perfect. It's because those 50 years, God was working through them. And they decided that through their broken parts of their relationship, they were going to stick with it. They endured. They allowed God to work. People who are not alone, this is such a big point. People who are not alone but are in the unity of, with the community around us, they give us strength. They give us hope, just like he's saying about. It's the idea that we have the ability to move forward in a way, in a common shared vision that we trust is inspired by God. And that's what we're doing here tonight. I truly trust that this place is inspired by God that the scriptures are inspired by God. That's why I always refer to them. And that the steps of recovery are a tool that God put in place so that people like myself, like if you find yourself here tonight, there's probably a reason that he is put here so that we can get strong and we can grow together and that he can completely restore our lives so that they are better than what they were when they started when we came in here. Because I don't know about you, when I came in here, I was broken. When I first came in here, I was completely broken. I'll, I would have taken, you know, just restore my life back to the way it was. I would have accepted that deal. You know, deal or no deal, I would have been like, I'm done. You know, I'm good. <laughs> but instead, he's like, no. I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to completely restore your life beyond what you could ever imagine, which is what we find in Scripture here. It says, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Man. Now, if the activity in the will of God was a home 
and prayer was our way of knocking on the door and entering into that home, meditation is us sitting down in the living room, getting on the couch and asking God, hey man, what's up? And for you guys to sit and listen, that's meditation. Woo. Oh, man. Richard Foster says, celebration in a celebration of discipline about what meditation is. He says, Eastern meditation is an attempt to empty the mind. Christian meditation is an attempt to fill the mind. Ooh, man. I didn't write that. <laughs> man. So now... I want to enlighten you, enlighten you guys on something. We just did that. We just walked through what meditation might look like when you're sitting on your couch, when you're in your special place. We're going to look at scripture. We're going to say, that's the light. And we're going to think about it. We're going to say, hey, how does this verse compare with one another? What does this mean for my recovery? Why is this pertinent to me right now? God's going to tell you. So looking again at step 11, it says, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So by praying on a gratitude list that we found in the book of Psalms, which is a response to God, we began to break down what these verses meant and we meditated on them as we filled our minds with the goodness of God instead of just trying to empty them of our suffering. Imagine how hard that would be. All right, guys, I want to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to see who the genius is in this room and, <laughs> and who the other guy is, okay? So, all right, raise your hand if you have ever walked into a dark room with a shovel and tried to shovel out the darkness. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> I did not think so. I didn't think that any of us would be so foolish to walk into an empty and dark room with a shovel and try to get out the darkness with that shovel. Because we know that the only way to get rid of darkness is to let in the light. And so, when we think about this, we can think about our minds being filled with our sickness and suffering that we call our addiction, our alcoholism, our codependency, our control, our anger, whatever it is that you're sick and suffering in here with tonight, we can call that our dark room. And you can sit and beat your head against the wall as much as you like and just try to empty yourself of the way that you naturally think. Or you can begin to enter into prayer and into meditation on the light. And you can let in God. So I want to build a slide here. It says, verse 3, he says, he forgives and he heals. Verse four says, he redeems life and he provides love and compassion. And verse five says, he satisfies our basic desires and renews our lives beyond that what we could have ever thought possible. So now we can see the will of God for our life. We've prayed, we've meditated, We've found what the will of God is for our life. And now we're going to ask for the power to carry it out. Now, the power of carrying it out is really where the rubber meets the road. It's that we remain faithful. Faithful means obedient. That we remain obedient to what he asks of you, not what you ask of him. Because there is a difference. If I was you, I would pray about, I would meditate on, and I would just try to figure it out. 
And so now you may be thinking, well, that really sounds nice, Mr. Man up there on the stage. Ooh, that sounds really good. Sounds like everything's working out for you. Really happy for you. But my relationships are all wrecked. I have not been able to get, get out of my sickness and my suffering. I can't, keep, I can't seem to catch a break. What do you want me to do with this? First off, I wanna say, I'm so sorry for the position that you're in. I know what it was like for me when I was trying to get out of it. And I don't ever wanna be, I don't ever wanna pretend to be in your shoes. Just because I've been low doesn't mean I've been exactly where you're at, because I haven't been. But that doesn't take away the fact that he still wants to forgive you and he still wants to heal you. It doesn't take away the fact that he still wants to redeem your life and provide you with love and compassion. And it doesn't take away the fact that he still wants to satisfy your basic desires and renew your life beyond what you thought was possible. He did all of that for me and many others. And the good news is, he didn't do it just for me. And he didn't do it just for the other guy sitting next to you or the other lady sitting next to you. The gospel says that he did it for you. And so now, I want you to write on a piece of paper that you were given when you came in and the pen that you guys got. One thing, if you can't think of anything else, think of one thing that you're grateful for and meditate on how God is responsible for it. And if you can't think of anything you are grateful for, write out what you want to be grateful for. Then pray for the strength and meditate on how you can work with God to make it happen. Thank you for letting me share tonight.